I thought it would be good to go live a little early to give this one a chance to wander across the table and interrupt our lesson. So if you're already here, this is Mona, Mona Lisa. She is a little rescue kitty that we have. Uh, and her partner in crime is Da Vinci. And I'm sure he will show up, although he got sprayed with a water bottle, bottle earlier, so maybe he won't. But um, Mona, nobody wants to see your butt. Um, yeah, as I mentioned in the first video, such are the challenges from broadcasting from home, right? Yeah, she is very, very sweet and very spoiled. And she has no sense of personal space. Mo, are you done? No. Come on, you need to be done, my friend. So, uh, how are you guys doing today? I hope things are, are going as well as can be expected. The cabin fever is not too monumental yet. Um, and that the weather has been such an area, at least now I have cat hair on my face. Um, you're able to get out and breathe some fresh air. She's back. Um, so, yeah, we'll just give her a minute, although it does look like it's 10. Mo, say goodbye. Come on. Come on, you need to go, my friend. Go. Yeah, thank you. She says, you're not serious, are you? Come on. Go. All right. That'll take care of her for that. So, now it's time to be a professional, right? Um, welcome back to Journal Through It. I am pleased that you guys are here. And I have to say that I have been so inspired and lifted by the work that I've seen you sharing. Um, it's, it's been really marvelous to see the seed of an idea of, of talking openly about our own journal practice to uh, kind of an invisible audience. You know, when you're broadcasting online like this, I'm sitting here alone in my kitchen and I, and I, and I feel alone, but then I come back to these feeds and I see everybody responding and, and being enthusiastic about the ideas and sharing the work that they're creating and it just it, it's a really marvelous feeling to help carry carry me through and hopefully carry all of us through this time so um, I am I am I'm very grateful for for getting to share all of this with you guys so Today, what I want to talk to you about is lines and the quality of lines and how lines can express what we're feeling, what we're seeing. They can be in response to um, things that are happening in our lives. So I want to talk about a variety of lines, the different sorts of tools that we can choose to use to help represent our emotions and uh, give you a couple of different exercises that you can try to do in your journals or think about um, do on these pages uh, to further express yourselves. So my lesson today is all ages friendly. So uh, younger viewers, if you are sitting here, I'm so excited that you're here and I'm excited that you're, you, you've got journals and books that you've made. I've seen pictures of them. They're pretty darn cool. So um, yeah, sit down, grab a pencil, some crayons, whatever materials you happen to have on hand. Um, and, and work alongside with uh, everyone else who's here. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, that lesson, and it's going to be for everybody. It'll be an all-inclusive lesson. So, um, But before I jump into that, I wanted to mention that I am, I, I'm broadcasting here from home. Those of you who tuned in right away got to see um, Mona, who was going back and forth across the table, claiming the workspace as her own, as any house cat should do. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm here for my house, I'm here, I'm alone uh, broadcasting, so 
Uh, I, I want to answer all of your questions, but in order for me to see them more easily as the stream is going, uh, if you have a question to ask, if you could precede it in your comment with the actual word question, maybe put it in all caps, that will make it a lot easier for me to see as I'm talking and scrolling and presenting. So I'm going to try to go back and answer questions at the very end of the session. Um, and I don't think today's session is going to be as long as the first one. But um, if you could hold on to your questions then, or if you can't hold on to your questions and you need to duck out for a minute, go ahead and put them in the feed. I'll scroll through the whole thing and do my best to answer them. So um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was the fact that there are different ways to approach working in your books. And for a lot of us, our first indoctrination to art was drawing an object that we saw in the real world. So we had a very specific plan as to how we wanted that piece of artwork to end up. We wanted to be able to recognize it. For instance, with the bunny painting on the wall behind me, in order for that to read as rabbits, we need to have a head that's a certain shape, we need to have ears, we need to have eyes and a nose. Those sorts of features have to be present in order for the work of art to read as a rabbit and for us to feel like it's successful. For me, when I approach my journal pages and my books, I don't often have that sort of a plan or a guideline in place ahead of time. I'm not working from a thumbnail sketch. I'm not thinking about having to end up with a page that actually looks like anything. My journaling process is so much more about what I'm feeling at the moment. And I use objects like rabbits to represent some of my thoughts. But I also use color and marks and shapes to tell that story. So I'm, I'm not necessarily relying on representational objects in my book to tell the story of me. I'm using my own language of color and marks and lines and shapes and some objects to tell that story. As a consequence, when I sit down to work on a page, uh, I may do an exercise like today I'm going to share with you with lines. I may do that on 15 pages in my book. Those 15 pages aren't done. That's just a layer of what will end up being the end result or the end page. So, I, you know, I, I just, the concept of working in layers can be hard for some people to wrap their brains around um, because they're so used to thinking about a coloring book page where the shapes and spaces are already determined and you, and you fill those marks in or paint by number. Sorry, I have cat hair on my face. Um, and so all of those marks are predetermined and the design is already predetermined and it's hard for them to just let go and trust in the process. I completely respect that, I know. I've seen some students in my classes you know, with that same sort of struggle where they, they want to trust the process but they don't know how. You really just have to let go. Um, and so I want to show you, and I think this is probably too far away, so I'm going to bring this artwork in closer. But I want to show you some examples of layers so that you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So when I think about or talk about layers, this is a page that is layers and layers of drawings of the same floral arrangement. I just picked up a different color pen and continued to draw in a different location. So I wasn't necessarily drawing the floral arrangement as, as it appeared in front of me, but I was drawing it as it made me feel. I loved the flowers and the riot of the blooms, and I just continued to draw them over and over and over again, and I did not care if they overlapped. I had no regard for true spatial representation I just got lost in the feel of the blooms of the flowers. Here is another one where I worked with lines. This is a couple of layers of lines. Again, working with flowers. Not necessarily the entirety of the flower, but just some of the petals, the leaves, the shapes. 
not thinking about how they might actually grow in a garden or appear in a vase, but just playing with their edges and the shapes and the relationships and what they made me feel. Now here is one that's a little bit more, oh, and let me add that the, I started this in pe regular pencil and then I went in with the colored pencil and I added the shading later. So the first layer would have been the pencil knot lines, the pencil plan, and the second layer would have been the colored bits and the shading elements. So there's two layers in this one. The first drawing I showed you was just the first layer of lines. Now this these are journal pages. They're done loosely. They're done on loose paper. This is one. Square it off. You can see the color in the background. That's acrylic paint. That was my first layer of acrylic paint. And I was just making shapes and lines and thinking about how I was feeling that day. How do you think I was feeling when I was working with those blues and purple colors? I think I was feeling pretty relaxed and probably very happy. Then you will see that there is sort of a train of purple, it was like a purple line with leaves on it that weaves around. It's, it's, ah, wrong hand, I'm trying to do this backwards in the camera. So it's over here, do you see this, this purple line? and how it continues to weave all the way over. So you can clearly see that I'm, I'm, uh, I have a coordination challenge, not very graceful. Um, that would have been my second layer. And then the third layer of lines or drawings is the black Sharpie over top. I don't consider this piece done. I would be happy to go in and put some more layers on it. So. And here is another one that's even more complex. So I don't necessarily start out and build this sort of a design from start to finish in one sitting, nor do I envision it with the thistles and all the other swirls and things happening. This is an image that evolved probably over about six months time frame, as I would just sit and put five or 10 minutes into it each day um, adding what I was happened to be feeling at the time. So when I show you the lessons today, they're going to feel like they're pretty simple, like they're not very complex. And they aren't, but they are a piece of complexity and that when they are partnered with other layers of marks, they become far more fascinating, far more faceted, and far more interesting to look at. So that said, um, my journaling approach is very layer centric. Um, and I just want everybody to be aware of that. Uh, I also wanted to talk about the fact that journals are not necessarily spaces for, for prettiness. We're not painting things to go over the couch. We're making art that represents how we feel. Um, we are playing and experimenting with new materials. We are taking risks as we learn. Uh, we are essentially talking to ourselves in an empty house inside our journals. Uh, so I don't want you to feel like your pages have to end up to be pretty. It's really wonderful when they do. It's very satisfying when they do, but that's not our goal. Our goal is to just get in them and make some marks. Um, I always told my kids when they were little, I, the amount of fun they had in the day was directly proportional to how dirty they got. And I kind of like how that analogy can apply to a journal book too. Um, what we learn in our journey is far more important than what it ends up on the surface of that page. And so that leads me directly to this page here. Um, this page is full of lines and I'm going to ask you to guess how you thought I was feeling when I made this. Let me bring it in to you a little bit closer. This is an altered book. This is an old book from the 40s, I think, and I found it in a thrift store. Uh, it's full of typefaces. It's really, the pages are really fascinating. 
Um, I've put a layer of gesso on here, uh, and then the marks were made with a crayon that was water soluble. So um, if, if you can't guess from this, I was feeling agitated, frustrated, angry, scared. I took, I took several crayons that represented those emotions from a color standpoint, and I put some pretty strong lines down on the page. And then I happened to hit them with some water. And I will show you that process later so you can actually see it play out. But this would be an example of lines representing how I was feeling at a given point in time. And I want to talk about how we can use lines to express our emotions. Where do I want to put this guy? I'll put you right here. So when we go to make lines, You know, typically we would just pick up a, pen, a pencil in the past and, um, you know, start to write, do our math homework or write that letter or whatever. Um, but when we work in our books, we can spend a little bit more time or thought thinking about our lines. And to that extent or regard, we can also use a different sort of tools to make our lines. Um, so. This is a paint pen, and this is going to make a lovely thick line. This is, a, this is a thick line, this is a hard line, it's a sharp line. Look at the tip on this marker. Uh, let me put it up there. Isn't that cool? So I can use this to make a skinnier line, or I can twist it and I can make a thicker line. I can also keep it in that twisted orientation and I can sort of rock it as I'm drawing. So I'm, if you can see the motion, I'm rocking my hand back a little bit so that the pressure moves. I'm doing this very gently. I'm not putting any sort of hard pressure on the marker tip at all because I don't want to bend it or break it. But twisting that line and rocking it back and forth as I make my mark changes the sort of line that I can make. So we know that a marker is going to make a sharp line for us, a hard line. This, oh, I have a blue sweater on and this is a blue stick. This is a wonderful piece of charcoal. You can see how nice and thick and blocky it is. Charcoal is sort of like a pencil lead. Isn't that beautiful? I get this really great thick line. I can turn this on its side. Now look at that sort of line. And look at what happened that was really cool. I didn't even expect it. It's like a rubbing. We've all done rubbings with crayons, right? Do you see how I got a rubbing mark in the middle of my line? Because there was texture underneath my page. So, oh, let me bring this back in. Do you see how the charcoal gives us a softer line? It's kind of um, pixelated almost. It's nubby. That is a softer line than the hard line of the marker. So charcoal is going to give us a really soft line. The other thing that charcoal is going to do is it's going to smudge. Look at how much softer this line is already. And I can smudge it back over top of other lines. I'm just using my finger. That's a pretty cool effect, isn't it? There's a really neat thing that happens with that channel in the middle of the page here. Ah, let me look. There's a channel or clarity between the two charcoal lines of white paper where that, that edge is a little bit back, ah, come back over here, where the soft edge is, appears harder because we've really made these edges much softer. So that's kind of a cool effect, something fun that you could do with lines. If you don't have these big charcoal sticks, you can use sidewalk chalk or regular chalk. So, uh, you could also use um, pastels. Hold on, I want to spray and get some of this off my hands if I can. Um, Experiment and see what you have. 
on hand. Um, so those would be soft and hard lines. And then lines can also come in light versus dark. So we know that this is kind of a light color, right? That silver is. But I have another marker, I have another paint marker, and this is kind of a cream color. And I can go over top of this. And I can make a lighter line. I can also go in with a really dark marker. This one is a big sharpie. I'm going to rock this one just like I did the silver one. And look at that cool line that I just got. So we have light lines and dark lines. Another way that you could make a light line, this is a chalk pencil. You can also use a piece of pastel. Let's put some marks here. Of course, this isn't going to work or show up so well on a white piece of paper. Let me put this down in front of me so I can use some more pressure and get some marks happening for you. So, can you see where I put the chalk lines? You need to have a darker ground. I put them right here, and then I put some right up there on the black mark. So you got to think a little bit about contrast when you're using white lines, right? You want to make sure that the ground that you set them on is dark enough to show them off. This is a great little drawing pencil. They're not that expensive. They carry them at most um, hobby stores. This makes a really great dark line. But then if you alter your pressure, you can get softer lines too. I love drawing with ebony pencils, which is what this is, because they give me a variety. Of different values. Can you see that? Oh, turn the wrong edge away. Uh, and then, you know, lines can also be soothing or they can be angry. Um, you saw my angry page. Where did I put that book? This is an angry page, right? But I could make some really soothing lines. Soothing lines to me would be more curvy, gentle. Maybe they are uh, circular, like a hug. And the pen that I'm using to make these lines is really soft. Let me hold it up here so you can see it. It's got a soft tip. It actually bends. It's called a brush tip. And it, if you put it down on your paper gently, you get a really nice um, mark. You get a, whoops, you get a soft mark. What's going on here? I'm not sure why that cap popped off like that, but so. You know, the lines that I just showed you, variety of, these all make you, or can represent, or when you look at them, they make you feel a certain way. So when you are sitting down at your book and you're feeling a certain way, maybe you're, maybe you're hungry. What would a hungry line look like? What would a hungry line look like? Hungry line to me would be... Let's see, hungry line. Let me get a marker that you can see. Hungry line might be a shape representing an empty stomach. And that could also be a head. It could be somebody who's angry, but that could be a hungry line. What would a curious line look like? Well, what is curiosity? We know that there's a, there's a symbol for curiosity or for questioning, asking questions. Right? We know what this line is. 
that represents a question. So a curious line, it could be an adaptation of a question mark. It could be just a curve. It could be sort of a spiral. To me, curiosity is reaching for information. So what if I made that curve sort of go across and end up with a little end on it? like a hand that's out there reaching for information. Um, curiosity could, could be represented by any one of a number of different lines. You may have an entirely different idea of what curiosity looks like. Um, what about excited? What would excited lines look like? Because we know that an exclamation point tells us to pay attention that something would be really exciting. So exciting lines, they could be rays that are coming out of something like, hey, look at me. Um, it could be a series of dashes, maybe without the points at the bottom of them. Uh, there, there's probably a hundred different ways that you could make excited lines. So, um, you know, I just, I, I want you to think about what you're feeling and use line qualities that represent that. Use, choose lines and choose a tool to make your lines that represent your feeling. And then you're already starting to tell the story from the very first layer. So what are you feeling right now? You know, we've all had lots of different feels. Um, the last few weeks because news has been pretty extraordinary. So um, what are you feeling right now? I am I'm feeling excited and grateful at this moment uh, and I'm gonna make a little space in my journal page to reflect that. So this is the journal that I have right here. This is the book that we made the other day, remember? We sewed a bunch of pages together the other day and we used a variety of papers that I had that were like throw out sorts of papers and I salvaged them from the trash and I made this little book from them. So what I've been doing in this book since then is first I made sort of like a graphic novel page with a bunch of cells on it to tell my story. Um, and just like a graphic novel, I decided that I was going to tell my story in sequence from right to left, top to bottom, just going across the rows. Not that you have to do that, I'm just explaining my own process. And then for the last couple of days, I thought about how I felt and I filled the cell with Sharpie lines that represented those. So this day I was feeling like I was gonna, I wanted to explode. I just had so many emotions and I wasn't sure where to let them go. So um, I'm not sure if you can see that, um, but they're black lines sort of in, a, in rays coming out of an empty, an empty center. This day I was really sad. And so I drew sort of um, sweeping sweeping kind of lines uh, going down and um, I, I didn't feel that that represented how I was feeling quite strongly enough so over here I isolated a single teardrop and in this one I want to bring it in closer so you can see it I decided to put lines gray lines over top this paint down here I totally should have mentioned this paint that you see here that would be the first layer on this page, by the way. And this framework, that would be the second layer. And these marks in the cells that I'm putting, that would be the third layer. So that's how this page is getting built up in complexity. So going back to this page, I was feeling um, sleepy, relaxed. Um, my kids had gotten here. I was much happier. And so I, I created these really smooth, undulating lines, sort of like a hammock. Um, so that to represent how I was how I was feeling yesterday. 
So today, based on my schematic of following, filling this out like a graphic novel, this would be the cell I'm going to fill. And I'm feeling a little bit excited today. So um, I'm, I'm a little bit happy, and that's, or I'm not a little bit happy, I'm much happier uh, now that I have my family here and um, sort of adjusting to being uh, quarantined or isolating ourselves. And uh, I'm also really happy because we've got the space. So I'm going to, I'm going to fill my page with marks that make me happy. And a happy mark to me is kind of like a smiley face, right? Or a little smile. Um, because those feelings are in, in, in opposition of what I have been feeling. They're pretty dramatic. I'm going to use a dramatic color, which is red. So let me put this up here. And I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to start up here in the corner. And I'm going to draw some miles. And I can stack them and sort of make them all piled up. How cool is that to have a big stack of smiles? I really like how that red looks too against this first layer of paint. It doesn't show up everywhere as, as clear as it might if it were just on a white page. But I really like that. So there is, let me bring this in closer for you. There is my cell today of lines representing how I feel. And this makes me even happier. So I'm going to add another kind of line to it. This is a roll of wash tape. It's tape that has a pattern on it. I'm trying to find the end of it. And it's just really pretty to use in decorative ways. And I'm just going to peel a piece of this off because look what happens. When you take a piece of tape, look at that, it's a line. So I'm going to peel off my washi tape and I'm going to put it on here. And now I have another line inside my nose. So that's one of the exercises that I want you to do, is build a page somewhere where you can track or record what you're feeling and spend some time sitting with what you're feeling um, and and um, give it a give it a visualization visual I don't know that I said that right um, so yeah and I also want to talk about how we can use lines since we just used the graphic novel analogy or example um, Comic books and graphic novels have a great history of using lines to tell a story. Uh, their, their visuals are so powerful and pared down to, you know, just the bare, most basic elements that they tell a story directly. You look at that drawing in a comic book, you look at that comic book page, and you can tell exactly what's happening without even having to go to the speech bubbles. So I want you to think about the sorts of lines that comic books use. Um, for example, like when there's an impact, you know, look at how my hands are moving. There's an impact. What sorts of lines would my fingers make if there were little pencils on the ends of all of them? Slamming into something. You know, an impact would be lines sort of colliding into each other, right? That would be an impact. It's very similar to what we used up here for um, excitement, but it's it's an impact. Um, what about quick movement? You know, think about quick movement too. A quick movement would be just sort of your, your finger, your hand flicking. So a quick movement sort of line might look like this. 
And look what happens if you change the pressure. I'm not really changing the pressure, but I'm lifting my hand as I make the line. Do you see how it gets lighter as the marker starts to leave the surface of the paper? That's a great way to show quick movement. Um, vibrations. Vibrations. A vibratory line is going to be a lot of little like that, or maybe a bunch of dashes or dots. Dots are considered lines. Dots are lines that just don't travel very far. Whoops. Uh, and, and, you know, there's also rhythmic lines. Uh, rhythmic lines follow or are made in response to something that we're experiencing. Maybe it's a poem or uh, nature noises that we hear. Rhythmic lines could be footsteps, right? Those could create rhythm, rhythmic lines too. So, you know, what would happen if we listened to music? and we made lines in response to that. Well, let's find out what would happen. So, do you remember my Peter Rabbit book? Uh, I took some sandpaper to one of the spreads in Peter, and I decided that I was going to put some lines in here, some rhythmic lines. And one of the things that really struck me a few days ago was a video that was going around the internet, perhaps you've seen it, that it was filmed somewhere in Italy, whoop, in a neighborhood that was on quarantine, and, ah, stop, I'm trying to turn the volume up and not get the video started, hold on. And uh, the, the population went out on their balconies. Someone was playing music, and they all began singing and dancing. Now, I have no idea. I don't speak Italian. Um, I have no idea what the lyrics were. But the melody of the song really resonated with me, and it stuck in my head all day long. And when things stick in my head, I feel like, hey, I need to stop and pay attention. So I sat down and I started to make lines in response to the music. So I'm going to play this and we're going to listen to it for a little bit. So if you were holding a pencil, what sort of lines would you want to make while you were listening to this? We're all going to have different interpretations. There isn't a right answer. So music has the power to make us move, and we think about movement to music as dancing, but we can also draw to music. We can let our hands dance in response to what we're hearing. So I chose a marker, and I'm going to turn the music back on, and I'm going to make some lines on this Peter Rabbit page. How about if I can, let's see if I can do it this way. So you can see how I have, you know, they, they maybe appear as scribbles, 
but they're actually lines that were made in response to that music. And I am going to put a link to this particular video on my Facebook page after we tie up here so that you have the opportunity to listen to the same music and, and respond on your own as well. Uh, using whatever tools you have on hand and, and channeling how you feel, how that makes you feel. And I'm going to show you some other things that I did in response to that music, that same piece of music. So you saw, you just saw Peter. Um, and in this book, this is my, my spirit animal book, um, all the pages have margins. And so the gold marker that you see on the margin here, that gold marker is response to the same, same music. And what I did was I went in on the top here with uh, my red brush and I made halos or outlined the lines. So that would be another interpretation. You don't just have to make the lines straight up. You can further embellish or decorate them however you feel, because it is it's about how you feel. That's what these lines are about. Here is another journal of mine, and I put it the long way because I wanted my lines, let me go backwards here, this way. I wanted my lines to be longer. After I'd done this a couple of times on some other pages, I really, instead of going the short way, uh, I, wanted, I wanted to have more length to make my marks. So I paid attention to how I felt and what my inclination was and turned my book sideways or the wrong way and made those lines. And I uh, also changed colors partway through. So I started with a silver marker and then I moved to a gold one um, to represent the chorus of the song uh, as well as the, the um, verses. Wow, I just lost that word. And here's something really cool that I realized when I turn the book this oh, when I turn the book back around. Isn't that a peaceful landscape? I never intended that. That was just a really happy accident. So this is the first layer on a page that's going to be really, really fun to work on. And then here is another one I wanted to show you. Same song, same gold marker and silver marker. Um, just a different book. I was thinking about trying to make my lines longer and working inside a confined space. And then I added you see this piece of collage here? It's actually collage that I pulled it out of the trash. And I bet um, I bet Michelle Hunt is watching today because it's a piece of collage from that she threw in the trash that she didn't want it. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And I've had it for like two years. And finally it found a home in this book. It seemed to go perfectly with these lines. I'm not sure where. What, what I'm going to do with this page, but this will be a page that has two layers on it. It will get more down the road. And then um, the last thing that I wanted to show, because I told you I would, I would show you how to do these sorts of lines with a watercolor crayon, which um, I think yesterday Ardith called them cray adult crayons, which I loved. That's okay. I'm sticking with that one, Ardith. I love it. Um, Watercolor crayons are fantastic because uh, they will move when you hit them with water, hence the watercolor bit. So I have a watercolor crayon here. Let me get this down off. You know what? Because I'm working with water, I have to do this flat. So I am going to bear with me here. So here are some lines that I'd already made on my page in response to that exact same song. Uh, I'm going to embellish them with a little bit more. As I think about the, the memory of that song and how it sort of echoes in that way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of shading here around the perimeter and I'm going to use different colors 
just sort of represent the echo and the reverb that happens. And just like with crayons, you can push really hard or you can color really soft and you get different results, right? You get a different value of the mark. So you can maybe see here, I'm making this pink much darker in the crevice there and making it lighter out, out on the perimeter. So I've added a little bit of color to this. Excuse my reach. I'm going to, I have, this is just a simple old brush. I'm going to dip it in a little bit of water because we know that these crayons are activated with water, right? Look at what happens. Aren't they beautiful? I'm just, there's nothing on this brush but water. Just hitting it with water and they're moving. That is so pretty. Now the other thing that I can do too, there's not a whole lot of tooth to this page is what I'm realizing and that can happen when you are um, working with different sorts of paper. This is a plastic um, placemat and I use it, I'm putting it behind this page because you see how this page is smaller than the rest of my book. I'm going to put it behind here so that when I go to work over top of it I won't be slathering things onto the adjacent pages. This is, this is not spicy brown mustard. This is acrylic gesso and I'm just going to put a little bit of it on there. I buy it in gallon buckets so it's nice for me to have these little squeeze bottles. Acrylic gesso is a little bit transparent, or at least this brand that I have is a little transparent. And I'm just going to brush it over this. What it does is it gives a little bit of grit to the page so that future layers will really stick. They won't slide off of it. And it's also going to seal those crayon marks down below. So you can still sort of see them probably much better person than you can on the, on the screen. But I can also go back into them. I can go back into the gesso and I can draw again. And that song is in my head. Dun 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 So I've got that song here, or I mean that mark there. I'm going to pick up a little bit of water with my brush and I'm going to go back in and I'm going to play with this a little bit. I'm going to soften edges and pull some of that red as an echo from music out. So that's it. I'll let this dry for a little bit. It'll take probably a half hour to dry and then I can go back in over top of it with pencil and add some shading or I can continue to do some more layers with uh, crayons. Um, it all, I try not to make much of a game plan ahead of time and just sort of go with how I feel. So, I've thrown a lot at you guys today. Let me move this wet painting aside and come in to the computer so that I can actually read it with my old lady eyes. What do you think of uh, what you've gotten so far? Do we have questions? Oh, let's see. I need to scroll all the way back. Let's show you. Oh, somebody's getting snow. I'm so sorry. I hate winter. We live in Michigan, which I know is an oxymoron, and I hate winter. We moved here from California, Southern California. So yeah, I know, not terribly bright. Um, I 
four minutes. Utah. I, I did start. I got on a little bit early because the cats were um, curious and I wanted to give them a chance to move around. But I really didn't start delivering content until 10 o'clock. So um, the first two or three minutes are mostly Mona walking back and forth. So I think you missed anything. You were right. I started at 10. Oh, hello. Hello. Loretta's watching from Canada, my sister-in-law. Um, is the big block of chalk I use water-soluble? Laura wants to know. Um, Laura, this is not water-soluble. This is, I'll actually show you the packaging. This is a Derwent extra-large graphite. You can get it in different colors. I happen to have it in, in a Prussian, and then I have another one that's in sort of an eggplant. I don't think that's actually what it's called. Um, but I love these. Um, I use them for um, large drawings. You can really cover the page a lot faster with them. And I love the ability to be able to draw with the wider edge versus the blunter end. They're, they're really cool. And you, you just order them one by one based on what color you want or um, thickness or, I mean, hardness. Thanks, guys. I'm you are so so welcome. Robin says she uses music to create quite often. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm not surprised either, um, Robin. I can see that in your work. So, are there any other questions? I mean, did I? I missed some. Are you losing the audio when I scroll, Michelle? Uh, if that's the case, I can try to scroll on another device like my iPad. So um, I guess that's something I need to test out because I don't want people to be able to, not to be able to um, hear my contents. All right, so is there any, anything else, any other comments or thoughts before I sign off? Well, I'm really looking so excited forward to seeing what you create. Uh, kids, if you create and your parents are okay with it, go ahead and share it on social media. Uh, tag it with the hashtag journal through it. That will make sure that I'm able to see it as well as Ardeth. And you're welcome to put it right here in this video stream of comments. Or you can put it and wherever your heart desires. Um, that goes for adults and grown-ups watching this too. Um, feel free to, to share wherever your heart desires. We just ask that you use the tag journal through it um, so people are able to trace back to the content and create for themselves as well. Um, again, really pleased and heartwarmed by the response to the class uh, and super excited and thrilled to be bringing you this sort of stuff. So I'm going to be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And I'm going to talk tomorrow about making some lists and um, spending some time with, with uh, delights and, and gratitudes. So I hope that you're able to come back and join me tomorrow. And I'm excited to see what you're going to share here. So I'm going to stay online for like... I'm going to sign off, but I'm going to stay in line for like the next 10 to 15 minutes to answer any questions that might trail in. Uh, and then I will come back later on in the day and make sure that uh, I've answered any questions that you might have. So thank you again. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, get outside, get some fresh air. If you can, if you're shoveling snow, feel your pain. And I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.